carry thing is really confusing to us, even. Season two was post 9-11, and our pool of resources was the real world. Is he dead? Can Jack Bauer really be dead? One thing's for sure, that was one incredibly harrowing episode. I'm Tamsin Sylvester and this is Pure 24. Tonight we've exclusive interviews with 24's creator Joel Cerno, as well as Lourdes Benedicto and Rako Ellsworth, Carrie and Michelle, who reveal how their storylines changed. And yes, boys, you weren't imagining it. They were originally supposed to be lovers. Next week, and this is just to tease you, we've got one of the biggest names from seasons one and two joining us in this studio. I'll reveal who it is later on. We've got our audience on hand to discuss their reactions to tonight's episode, as well as comedian Johnny Candon and writer and broadcaster John Azel. With two Johns, it's going to be very confusing for me. How was that episode for you? Quite a shocker. Oh, it was an extraordinary episode. We'd had a bit of a lull after the, the bomb had dropped, but this got everything back together. A lot of new characters. Really, really exciting. Fairly harrowing. It was mental. It was just full on from start to finish. The only bit that actually let up was the kiss between Tony and Michelle, which is lovely, oh. and then straight into a mad torture scene. So, yeah, great. Always, always good to have a bit of torture. Yeah. Well, it looks like the president is about to be overthrown whilst Lynn is locked in a store cupboard. Michelle snogged Tony whilst her brother's sedated. For the first time in 19 hours, there is no sign of Kim. And Jack's dead? There's so much to talk about. So call us on 0870-24-009-24. That's 0870-24-009-24. Um, 00924. You can also text, email or send us a DSAT message. All the details are on the bottom of the screen right now. So is our hero really dead? It seems crazy. Would they really do this to us? And to Jack, would they do it to us? What's your view on this? Is the man dead? He can't be dead. He just can't be. Unless, it's, unless the series is going to end very, very quickly. Uh, Jack, I think he's going to be helped by the torturer's assistants because they okay. were beginning to turn against Stark. They were beginning to say, look, this guy doesn't really need all this trouble. You're going to kill him. One of the brilliant things about 24, though, I mean, we're all saying he can't be dead. He can't possibly be dead. It's Jack Bauer. But 24, he could be. I mean, they could, it could be one of those massive twists. They all say nobody's safe. I don't, I think, I, I don't think he is dead, but I, I do think he could be. I think it could be just one of those things where, I mean, why couldn't he be dead? There's no reason. I mean, everybody else at CTU is trying to stop the uh, terrorists. So, I mean, Jack could die and it, they just carry on and hopefully, you know, it's all going to be fine. But I, th I don't think he is. It would I... generate so much hype, wouldn't it, for the show? If Jack yeah. died, it would be such a great coup, really, for the programme makers to say, hey, look what we've done. <laughs> Killed our main character. <laughs> Woohoo! But no, I don't, I don't think he's dead. I think he'd be fine. I, I think... don't think he's dead either. That torch scene, very, very harrowing, very intense. Do you think it was too much? No, I don't think it was too much. I think Stark was a very, very interesting character. He was like uh, O'Brien from 1984. He was an intellectual and he, he seemed to have all the power, but he doesn't because if he kills Jack, then it's wrong. He went he too hasn't, far. He hasn't got the information. He might have gone too far, but again, he seems to be a professional. He knows what he's doing and you would imagine he would do enough not to kill Jack. But it's a close call. It is a close call. I'm going to um, give you some medical insights now. Look at oh. me. It's like ER. I have a little <laughs> clipboard. Um, I just want to talk you through the torture, if that's OK. The scalpel, he dipped it in ammonia, so that would corrode Jack's skin. That's not nice. Cauterizer, some kind of burning instrument. It's supposed to um, fuse together blood vessels, but in this case, he just dug it in the wound and wiggled it about a bit. Then got him with an air taser. It's all very harsh, isn't it? Poppers to wake him up, a little, little bit of amyl nitrate just to keep it going. And at the end, they were calling for epinephrine. I may have pronounced that wrong. I don't think I have. <laughs> it's, it's what the US call adrenaline, and that's basically, I think, what might save him, what might wake him up. Do you know, I think, I think, um, I think he's killed them to prove a point. I think, because, you know, at the end, he was doing CPR on them to... Bring, to, to I think he's... I think, obviously, it's not the first time he's done it. This guy Stark, he's not, he's not an amateur. It's like, not you know, the first time he's almost it, killed a torture yeah, victim. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think what he's done is he's actually killed Jack. He's going to bring him back and go, see, I can kill you, I've brought you back, I'm not going to do it next time. That kind of thing. I think it's the ultimate form of torture. I'd have just shown him the uh, poppers to start with. And I, if he'd just shown me that, I'd have spoken. I wouldn't have known what he was going to do with that. But, um, yeah, I think, I think he's going to be OK. I think he's going to bring him back. Jack won't talk, but... Um, He'll never talk. He's too much of a pro. We're going to go to the phone lines now. And we've got Jane on the line. 
Hi there. Hello. Hello. Um, what do you make of the guy, the, the torturers and the man in the helicopter, the, the sort of Gotham City-esque type villain? Who do you think they are? I haven't the slightest idea who they are. OK. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, with 24, you never know who they are. Are they on the good side or the bad side? Um, they're clearly not on the good side, are they? They're, they're <laughs> digging things in jack. Well, you never know, though, with 24. So I may, think the maybe Jack's are on the bad side. I, don't, I think so. But then Jack's done a lot of torture in his time, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah how much? How much can Jack stand? Take, you know. Well, not much by the looks of it. <laughs> what, what about? I mean, the, these bad guys, the guy in the helicopter, the torturers. Do you think they're connected to any of the characters we already know? Are they connected to Sherry, the vice president, Novik? Oh, well, I think they could. I think they very well could be connected with the vice president, with him taking over like he's doing. Okay. I thank you very much. For that to happen. Thank you for your call. Um, who, do you, who do you guys think the torturers are? Who are they working for or with? Well, they, they're clearly not thugs, because you saw when they were going through the hospital that they, they were very, very efficient. They were also quite subservient. They were saying, sir. Uh, I think they're, they're clearly trained soldiers. It'd be interesting to see if they had uh, snake tattoos on their forearms. It would be very interesting. I, I don't think they're part of the snake group, I think. Um... There are a whole other different crew of baddies. I'm yeah. going to go to Paul in our studio audience. Um, Paul, what did you make of the guy in the helicopter? Who do you think he's working for? Oh, uh, he's, he's just confused. The whole episode's confused. I was just going back to Jack, though. Uh, I, I've had this theory. He must be bionic with all the trees and stuff, and I think the, the wiring in the stomach and the torture, I think it's just trying to fix him. And he'll be back next week. It's a nice Old theory. <laughs> no, that's, uh, no idea who the guy in the helicopter is, not at all. No, no theories on that. So, do, what do you think will happen to Jack? Oh, he'll come back to life, but he'll be stronger and better. And okay. Have a, you could, <laughs> stronger have a and better eye. and more bionic. We'll take some more <laughs> messages. Um, this is from Chris Bott. C Jack can't die. It wouldn't be 24 anymore without Jack. I, re I subscribe to that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, as exciting as it would be to do it, I don't think they should. Kelly in Wales, it's good to see Jack all greased up. If only the camera was a little lower. <laughs> Kelly! <laughs> the man's being Come tortured. It's serious. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever turns you on. You know what I mean? <laughs> Although, you know, naked Jack. Stop that, Tammy. OK. <laughs> Trin, Jack is not dead. He's practised this loads of times before in flatliners. <laughs> oh. It's true. He, ha he has the backstory to cope with that. Joe, you thought Jack's heart stopping was bad. That episode nearly um, had mine gone. Where do we go from here? Where indeed? It's very hard to think. Um, one more message. Kieran in Liverpool. That was the least cliffhanger so far. Um, we know he will not stay dead. He is back for the next series. What a letdown. Oh, but there's so many other cliffhangers. You see, the next series could be a prequel. It could be anything. That was the least grammar I've ever seen in my life. I know. <laughs> I had trouble reading it out, but there we go. I did my best. Well, we all know now what the official connection is between Michelle and Carrie. Do you think it's a disappointment? Yeah, I do. I, I, when I found out that there was supposed to be... Um, the, the, the whole thing was maybe that they were lovers in the past, I think that's a much... Um, it's a much more interesting kind of um, reason for um, Michelle to not like Carrie. It's a real kind of, you know, they've broken up or she refused to advance, it's that kind of thing. And I thought that brother was an idiot. I just thought there's no <laughs> way that a strong, powerful woman like Carrie, no matter what you think of her, she is horrible, but would go but for this dribbling idiot. She's turned him to jelly. Very quickly, were you disappointed by... I was, I was a little disappointed, but clearly when uh, Carrie went off with Danny, he was a much stronger person. Exactly, she ruined him. Well, it was supposed to be different, as the actresses who play Carrie and Michelle, Lourdes Benedicto and Rachel Ellsworth, exclusively reveal. Wow, oh, the Carrie thing is really confusing to us, even. She was initially brought in to be my former boss who had sexually harassed me and, um, and who said I could be promoted if, if I slept with her, but I didn't, and so I ended up at CTU. Anyway, um, they saw it and they kept it, but then they completely changed it. <laughs> And so another instance where we thought we were playing something and then all of a sudden we sort of have to shift and, and justify it. But um, what's amazing about this show is you can justify about anything. Because um, it, it's, you play in those subtleties. I'm gonna go see if Tony needs some help. We actually shot the first episode with the first storyline they gave us. And I took that and used it, and you know, there was actually one scene where I winked at her. Um, and they left it all in, and it somehow the storyline just 
changed and it seems to be making sense. Tony, Chappelle's looking for you. Yeah, okay. The scene I really enjoyed shooting was where Carrie catches uh, Tony and Michelle kissing. Because um, we actually, when we filmed it, we came up with this idea that she was going to interrupt them, but not right away. So there's this moment where you think, God, has she been watching them and then decides to interrupt them, which is creeped me out so much, but I loved it because it creeped me out. It made me so uncomfortable and I said, oh, that's very her, you know? So that was fun. So loving that kiss. Well, we'll be hearing more from them later in the show. Plus, next week, time to let you in on the secret. We've got a real exclusive. Penny Johnson Gerald, the actress who plays Sherry Palmer, will be live in the studio on this sofa to tell us about life on 24 and what it's like playing the president's wife. So on to the kiss. With all the madness in this episode, who'd have thought there'd be time for romance? Did you think there would be time for romance and does it ring true? It does ring true. I just thank God they've got it out of their system. It's been built. How have they though? They look well, like they were interrupted there. Well, they're they're onto what Americans would call first base, and you know <laughs> that things are gonna pro progress. They looked exhausted after that little kiss. I know. Lord, will they get to it? second base? They've been up for twelve hours, you know, but I mean oh. I don't think they could have got onto second or third base there and then. Do you know what I mean? It's they like... would have they would have done if they hadn't been interrupted though, wouldn't well, they? In CTU. Of course they would. Yeah, anything can happen. Do you there. think they would go all the way? Sweep those things off the desk? <laughs> it's been a difficult day. They need a bit of a bit Oh, of light look, I've relief. had bad days at work. <laughs> I'd... Right. It's okay. never exactly. ended like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to the phone lines. Jude is on the line. Jude, did you enjoy the romance? Hi, yeah, I thought it was um it was much needed actually, this episode, because like you were saying before, it was just so heavy with all the torture and that kiss was kind of it was a good lift me up, but it was a bit cheesy, but Okay. Oh, we like a bit of cheese, though, don't we? Um, Michelle actually mentioned that she was tired and emotional. It's the first time we've actually had reference to them having been up for 19 hours. That was that was kind of necessary as well, wasn't it? Yeah, because I was thinking before the episode started, nobody's knackered and it's 2 o'clock in the morning. No one said anything about being tired, so I think it's starting to take its toll, so the emotions are, like, getting, like, more, like, tense and raised up and they're getting a bit more stressed, so I think they the kiss will relieve a bit of tension and they can just get on with their work. OK, thank you very much for your call. <laughs> um, Tom, will it relieve tension or will it just... Will they just be fizzing away in their separate offices? Well, it might relieve some tension, but I don't think the relationship will last because it never Why? does in 24. Because one of them will die, probably. <laughs> oh, do you really think so? <laughs> well, I hope not, but, you know, you never know what's going to happen. See, I really like that moment where there was a phone call and Tony was up in his office and she was down at the desk and... Yeah, but it's completely unnecessary. Why doesn't they just go up to the office? You know, they're always using the phone. <laughs> More tension. And that ringtone is just... You terrible. see, I was thinking it might just be a girly thing enjoying the snog, but you liked the snog moment as well. Oh, it was OK. Oh, it was oh, OK. Oh, stop being such a flower. That was brilliant. <laughs> no, it was fine. Now, Carrie interrupted this snog. Is she going to tell Chappelle? Chappelle is now there in the building. Is she going to cause trouble? She's certainly going to use this information. Uh, and she's going to... Because she's just an absolute out-and-out out bitch, so she's going to use it in the way which will promote her career and her, her views, whatever they are, she's going to use it. And she will get Chappelle, I think, as an ally. What do you think she can actually do? I mean, say they've had a well, kiss. You won't get into trouble for kissing somebody. If I kissed you now... Go on. Kiss, kiss, kiss! Go on! Yay! Oh, that was... <laughs> the earth moved. Oh, I'm happy we've had a little Tune in at half sofa. past one to see what happens next. <laughs> but, um, no, it's, I, I, I don't think she can go to Ryan Chappelle and go, oh, they had a snog, because he'll just kind of go, yeah, listen, somebody tried to detonate a bomb in L.A. earlier on, chill out. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not the worst thing you can do. It's, I mean, uh, but I, I, she will use it somehow, because she is, like you say, horrible. But, I mean, um, I, don't think, I don't think kissing him is, is a necessarily sackable offence. You know There's I mean? nothing wrong with a bit, bit of kissing. Zoe, Danny, now, we've seen him now. He's come into the office. He's caused a bit of a stir. A, would he have got in? It was such a pointless little sideline storyline. We, you know, we all thought, well, what was the point in that whole thing? It was obviously to defuse the tension between Michelle and Carrie that we all correctly guessed was supposed to be that they were past lovers. They just had to get rid of that story somehow, so they've killed it with this, this pointless guy 
kind of a Kim substitute. Do you for this think week. they've also they also brought him into that office to create the big fuss so that they could then go and have their bit of romance in the corner? Perhaps it was yeah a kind of means to an end and also a means to creating the kind of tension with Chappelle as well, who by the way I think is looks like a sleaze to me. <laughs> All this time we've been yeah. hearing him on the telephone and hearing about him, and you think he might be a little bit more respectable looking. <laughs> We're not, we, we don't like don't him. Like he's him horrible, already. isn't he? He's oily. He's going yeah. to be trouble. Don't like him. <laughs> well, um, take some messages. Jen in Devon says, that snog was long overdue, but that sly fox will use the situation to her advantage. Assume we're talking about Carrie there. Buck Dog says, Michelle and Carrie should settle their differences like any two adult, respectable women, butt naked in a wrestling <laughs> ring covered in mud with me refereeing it. <laughs> now, that's not the kind of responsible message we expect on this show. Um, two more messages. Catherine in Hampshire says, the kiss between Tony and Michelle was brilliant. It was so passionate and Tony is so gorgeous. You see, us girls love a bit of kissing. Oh. We all love a bit of kissing. We all love a bit of kissing. One more message. Laura in Woodford. Tony and Michelle's kiss was hot and steamy. When will we see a Jack and Kate kiss? Do you think we will? Um, not unless she's into something <laughs> extremely kinky at the moment, because he's <laughs> kind of dead. Right now. Right. <laughs> Maybe eventually. Ah, yeah, definitely. I mean, oh, the thing yeah. is, everybody's going on a bit because it's 24. Um, it all has to go wrong. I don't think it will. I mean, uh, I think uh, hopefully Tony and um, you know Michelle will be together at the end of the series. I mean, in series three, if and there is one. Little babies. Yeah. Yes. Kill them okay, off. Just but an I mean, idea you know, I just Aww. let somebody be happy at the end. You <laughs> yes, know. I think so too. Well, there have already been 93 deaths so far in this series, and it'll be 94 if you include Jack. So what's it like being in a show where every character has the potential to be killed off? We asked Reiko and Lourdes if there is as much paranoia off screen as there is on it. I came in season two, so I knew there was no security. I knew no one had any security. I never unpacked my bags. And, um, but I've been in every episode, so, and I'm not dead yet, so I don't know. Um, I'm just seeing this being aired like after my death scene. <laughs> this scene. But, um, but uh, but so far, you know, I'm I'm alive. Danny, stop! Stop! Why? Why? What are you taking Carrie's side now? Of course I'm not taking her side. Just come to my station. Why? No! Hey! 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 Come here! Don't talk! Danny! 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 And basically, I go through it. I'm, I'm like, <gasps> you know, and then I'm like, do I die? <laughs> That's like what I want to know at the.